This is hard-hitting safety LeRun Landry, a massive human with a massive appetite for anything that could improve his physique and power. But this is what happened when he met the subject of today's video. Alright then, let's get it. From day one it was clear, Brandon Jacobs was destined for big things. But there were some potential pitfalls because dude was a big kid with an even bigger temper. He was raised initially by his mom and later moved in with his aunt, but with no father figure around, dude struggled with his behavior early on. He skipped school religiously and was even forced to spend a little bit of time in special education classes. Now we all know the stigma that comes with that, but thankfully his athletic prowess allowed him at least some level of social redemption back during those high school day. Today, Brandon Jacobs is eyeing an NFL comeback at defensive end. Let's say inspired by Tim Tebow's unlikely return to the sport. Now, the last time Brandon Jacobs played on the defensive line in any capacity was during his first couple of years of high school football. Only back then, that was a little bit of an issue. Brandon felt he should be playing varsity, but when he was regulated the JV early on, dude walked away from the sport indefinitely. He instead spent time on the basketball team, stayed away from the gridiron for a year or two but he ended up going back during his junior season and one specific position change completely reworked this man's life trajectory brendan came through three college stops an unfortunate helmet situation and a beef with an nfl head coach all to become a two-time super bowl champion and a beast in the league during his best years today the former nfl running back is looking to try his hand at a new but old position at 6'4 270 during his playing days a prime brendan jacobs definitely had the size and athleticism to do it but at the ripe age of 38 the odds are definitely not in his favor. With that said, only 1% of players ever make it to the NFL in the first place. And coming from where he comes from, Brandon Jacobs has already beat the odds on more than one occasion. So before you count him out, listen to his story and see what he's been through to get here. And maybe you just might change your mind. This is what happened to Brandon Jacobs, the Napoleonville nightmare that nobody ever wanted to tackle. Cue the way. Whether or not he makes it back into the league, if you can hop off the couch and look like this at age 38, that's a win. And with the help of today's video sponsor, Magic Spoon, we can all get just a little bit closer. Since I was a kid, I love cereal. It's quick, tasty, and at least somewhat filling, right? But I had to give it up because I realized it's full of sugar and junk that really doesn't do me any favors as I continue to age. That's where Magic Spoon comes in clutch. Zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Plus, every serving is just 140 calories. The best selling flavors are cocoa, fruity, frosted, and you can never go wrong with peanut butter. My favorite is this frosted joint. It takes me back to those carefree days as a kid when I was knocking back two and three bowls on the weekends if my grandma didn't cook. And the taste is surprisingly good. Like, given the nutrition of this thing, it is kind of too good to be true. It's also keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free low carb gmo free whatever you got going in your diet you're good to go so click the link below and try the variety pack today and be sure to use code blimlo at checkout for five dollars off any purchase or go to magicspoon.com slash blimlo for the same deal and it's the best part magic spoon is so confident in their product it's back with a 100 happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for any reason they will refund your money no questions asked so click the link below and use the code flimlo for five dollars off today or go to magicspoon.com slash flimlo for the same deal shout out to magic spoon once again for sponsoring the video but other than that let's get it during his high school days, Brandon Jacobs' coaches used to worry about giving him the ball in full contact drills during practice. This was, of course, out of fear of him injuring their own players. But in games, they'd unleash dude against his opponents with no remorse. Let's do the math. 6'3", 230 pound teenage running back with a temper problem, plus 4'5 speed, minus remorse that equals 4783 yards and 56 touchdowns in only two seasons 3000 of those yards and 38 of those touchdowns all came during brandon's senior season after he got a grasp of the position and to be real had he played running back from jump he probably would have broke every record known to man brandon accepted a scholarship offer to auburn university but there was one small issue he never actually got his high school diploma this was all due to the fact that he'd spent some time in special 
special education classes, which can't count towards a diploma. Essentially, he just needed a few more credits and thanks to that, he was forced to take the scenic route. Juco. As a freshman at Coffeeville Community College in Kansas, Brandon had to fight the stigma of his size. The coaches took one look at dude and somehow forgot he ran for 3,000 yards as a senior. They wanted to move him to D-line. I think we're already starting to see the connection and this is probably why Brandon believes he can come back and play on the defensive line today, albeit as an edge rusher, not an interior d lineman. Eventually, Brandon fought off the ever thirsty defensive line coach and stayed true to his position running back. I mean, Auburn had offered him a scholarship at running back. All he literally was there for was to get his grades up. I'm not about to switch positions. Are you for real? Perhaps they thought Brandon's production had to do with him being in a small town and wouldn't translate well to junior college. That's when he did this. In 10 games, Brandon Jacobs ran for 927 yards and 13 touchdowns. That was enough but he didn't stop there. In year two of his Juco career, same 10 games, y'all ready for this? 1,623 yards and 17 touchdowns as he was only getting better and better as a runner. He leaned on coach Jeff Leaker for guidance both on and off the field. Leaker had once coached the great Corey Dillon and with that feather in his cap, he had Brandon's undivided attention. After two years, Brandon was easily the top Juco prospect, and with his grades now in a solid place, Dude was able to continue his journey as originally planned. Time to go to Auburn. Still, his arrival at Auburn in 2003 couldn't have been timed worse from a playing time standpoint. Remember these cats? Runny Brown and Cadillac Williams? Well, if you're unfamiliar, I'll link a video I did on them a few years back, but just for some context within this story, many people consider them to be the greatest SEC running back duo ever. So yeah, they was taking all the damn snaps from Brandon and everybody else. It was basically a fight for the third string spot, a fight that Brandon Jacobs easily won. Being a third string back, you'd expect Brandon to get the third most carries, which he did. But despite that, he still finished tied for the second most rushing yards on the entire team, rushing for the same yards on less carries than the great Ronnie Brown. A common theme with a lot of successful people, especially people who achieve success early, they generally have a lack of patience. Brandon Jacobs is no exception. Remember, he quit football as a freshman in high school because he wanted to go straight to varsity and didn't want to wait. Well, it's funny because we know he went back out his junior season, but due to his impatience, once again, it almost never happened. So at the beginning of that junior season in high school, Brandon was standing in this long ass line to go and take the free physical. After a few minutes, I don't know, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes, he was like, bruh, forget that. I ain't about to stand in this line, bruh. I'm about to go home. Hops out the line, he's walking home, he gone. One of his friends reaches out the line, grabs this man's hand, pull him back in the line and say, bro, look, I'm gonna stand here, I'm gonna talk to you, we talk about whatever you wanna talk about, Time will pass and before you know it, we'll be up at the front. Fortunately, he was able to talk Brandon off the cliff. He eventually gets to the front, takes the physical passes and you know, the rest is history. Given Brandon's somewhat impatient nature, when he found out both Cadillac Williams and Ronnie Brown were set to return to Auburn in 2004, Brandon understandably won it out. He only had one more year of college football and he needed more touches to show what he can do that way he can make it to the league, the ultimate goal, right? So he transferred to his third college, Southern Illinois, a D1 AA school. As you've probably guessed, the reason he went down to a D1 AA school was so that he could bypass the transfer rules and not have to sit out a full season. In only eight games at Southern Illinois, Brandon Jacobs carried the rock 150 times for just under a thousand yards and 19 touchdowns. At the NFL Combine, Brandon measured in at 6'4", 267 pounds, ran a 4'5'6", and recorded a 37 inch vertical. Those are stupid numbers. Like ridiculous, ridiculous combine stats. After being selected in the fourth round by the New York Giants, Brandon Jacobs initially made his mark in the league as a situational runner, basically a short yardage goal line guy. As a rookie, he didn't even gain 100 yards rushing, but somehow scored seven touchdowns. The following year, his role increased, more touches, more yards, and yes, more trips to the end zone. But it wasn't until year three, 2007, after longtime Giants great Tiki Barber decided to call it quits, that Brandon actually got a chance to carry the load. Now his 200 carries were still about a hundred short of what Tiki was getting, but just like he'd always done, 
Brandon made him all count, averaging five yards per carry on the way to his first 1,000 yard season. And what a memorable year that must have been. You have your first 1,000 yard season and then your 10 and six New York Giants go on to upset the undefeated New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. Brandon continued to play well over the next several seasons, having his best statistical year in 2008. 1,100 yards and a ridiculous 15 touchdowns, but he was snubbed by the Pro Bowl voters as he didn't make it despite having a better year than several other guys who did. But the year still paid off as Brandon got a new contract. Unfortunately, as it seems to happen so often, shortly after getting paid, dude got injured and spent a little time on IR. Brandon Jacobs actually did a hell of a job controlling his temper as he got older. He might get into a scrape or two here or give you a sound bite there, but for the most part he did well to harness his temper and use it as a weapon on the field. But in 2010 he had a little bit of a slip up. We talking literally. In week two of the 2010 season, Brandon decided to blow off some steam by forcefully throwing down his helmet. Super normal thing, not a big deal at all. You see football players do it all the time, including your favorite quarterbacks. Baseball players are going a five minute tantrum terrorizing the entire dugout okay it's sports we love it we're not judging for that at all but it just so happened when brandon went to slam his helmet down it somehow slipped out of his hand and he accidentally ended up throwing his helmet into the stands we don't really need to spend a whole lot of time here here's the bullet point brandon jacobs strong as hell nobody got hurt this fan really wanted to keep this helmet and lastly brandon gave a sincere apology as it was clearly just a mistake Moving on. In 2011, he contributed to his second Super Bowl win, once again getting the best of the New England Patriots. On both of the Super Bowl runs, Brandon Jacobs would have points in the season where the team really leaned on him and what he contributed to the squad was invaluable in helping them get to that destination. But while he definitely had some big playoff games, he never ended up just going off in the Super Bowl. Pretty sure he doesn't care too much. I mean, he got two Super Bowl rings, but probably would have been nice to score a touchdown or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Following that 08 season, the two-time Super Bowl champ was released by the only NFL team he'd ever played for. And one six-year-old Giants fan was so hurt by this man's release, he sent his entire life savings of $3.36 to help Brandon with his transition to another team. Brandon was touched by Lil Man's gesture and eventually got a bounce house for the kid and his family. And Brandon took his five-year-old son and they all played and bounced around for a couple of hours during an off day. That was actually really nice. But Brandon's time with the 49ers, not so much. Brandon Jacobs had a contentious relationship with 49ers coach Jim Harbaugh. And with Brandon getting older, he could feel his time in the game starting to run thin. And not to mention, this is already a guy who's probably not the most patient person as we've set up throughout the story. But for whatever reason, he wasn't getting the opportunity. Then he pulled the move that you see when dudes are struggling to get over their ex. Only his ex was the New York Giants. While being on the active roster of the 49ers, Brandon took to Twitter to post pictures of his two Super Bowl rings. He added a caption. I'm on this team riding away, so why would I want to put any pics up of anything that says Niners? He later posted this. This is by far the worst year I've ever had. I'll tell you like I told plenty others. I'm going to talk about this real quick because I've seen things like this happen in today's world and, you know, I have a unique perspective, it seems. This seemed like the common sense perspective, but, and what I'm about to say, I promise I mean this respectfully. I'm pretty sure Brandon would agree, but this is just more for the viewing audience. I know I got some younger cats that watch this and even some older cats, you know what I'm saying? I'm 33, so I'm like right there in the middle, right? You know how everybody likes to quote that Jay-Z line, I'm not a businessman, I'm a business man. I don't think they really internalize what that means. Whether you're a football player, a YouTuber, an entrepreneur, whatever you are a business right if you have a brand on social media you're a business so you gotta move like that and in business when you have issues with a partner you handle it with a certain level of tact if you run the social media every time something don't go your way in a meeting other businesses are not gonna want to work with you and that's just common sense on their part if you were in their shoes and you had the choice to deal with a potential volatile situation or deal with something a lot more stable and you're already successful i'm gonna follow the stability because anytime we have these public spats at the end 
end of the day, it just makes us all look bad. Now don't get it twisted cause in the meeting I'm on your ass and I'm telling you exactly how I feel expressing myself to the fullest. But what I'm not gonna do is allow my problems to spill over into the public eye. There's no reason for it. I can handle it on my own. I don't need to broadcast it. As for this particular situation with posting the Giants pics on social, I think everybody understands why that's an issue, but this is just a quick example. If a person partnered with Walmart and then post target pictures all over their social media, there's gonna be an issue. Like when you go back to work or when you check your email or when your phone start to ringing, like don't be surprised. It is a free country. You can do whatever you wanna do, but there are consequences. You can't do whatever you wanna do without consequences. You feel me? I'm not judging Brandon Jacobs, the individual. I have done stuff like this. I'm pretty sure the majority of us have. But one of the main reasons I like to go back through these stories is to see what things potentially went wrong and take lessons from them so we don't have to make those in the present or in the future. When the backlash started coming in, Brandon took to Twitter and he said this, I don't understand why people are angry at me because I wanna do what I'm paid to do. I'm a competitive person. I think people should be mad if I didn't want to play. As for all of my Instagram photos, I don't have any Niner pics. If you find me some pics, I'll put them up. Now the last social media incident I want to mention, this one. So on the same day, 49ers coach Jim Harbaugh was hospitalized for what was called a minor procedure for an irregular heartbeat. Brandon took the Twitter or Instagram and said, this never work in a place where you hate your boss so much you should always be happy at work hashtag you live and you learn now brandon insists that this had nothing to do with jim harbaugh maybe it didn't when something like that happened with your coach y'all got a known like rift and then you post that why do that it's so easy to avoid just don't post it damn now there is one exception, one time where it's cool to post whatever the hell you want, and that is this. If you have thought about the consequences and you are perfectly fine with them. And there were a lot of articles at the time that suggest that Brandon may have been trying to get released by the 49ers because he wanted to return to the New York Giants. And if that's the case, it makes total and complete sense. All right, I'm with you, bro. And after that whole fiasco in San Francisco, Brandon did rejoin the Giants for his final NFL season in 2013. So again, if that was his plan, it worked to perfection. He ended up playing in seven games and gained 238 yards and scored four touchdowns. And to his credit, dude was actually still averaging 4.1 yards per carry, which would have put him right on pace with a 27 year old Marsha and Lynch, a 23 year old Eddie Lacy, and this fried chicken that needs more respect, a 22 year old Gio Bernard. Let's give it up for Gio. Come on, Bengals fans, where y'all at? Despite that, Brandon retired from the game after that season, finishing with 5,000 career rush yards, 60 touchdowns, and two Super Bowl rings. Not too shabby for a kid out of Napoleonville. He messed around with a little acting and a few business ventures in retirement, but mostly spent time focusing on his family. But these last couple of years, Years have been crazy and when we said we wanted to go back to a simpler time like 2007 i don't think this is what anybody was envisioning but when your boy tim tebow popped back up in an nfl uniform brandon jacobs took the social media to make a statement and a request well since tebow came back after being off a good bit i'm announcing the day that i too will come back i'll play defensive end for whatever team gives me a chance i really am serious about coming back as a defensive end i can still run i'm strong and there's no way Tim Tebow is a better athlete than I am. I just need a shot. That's it. If I can't cut it, I'll take it like a man. Just give me one chance. That's all. Now, anytime you post your aspirations, the internet be like this. And while what Brandon Jacobs is attempting to do is something that hasn't happened with a great amount of frequency throughout NFL history, if Tim Tebow would have posted this exact same thing on Twitter, like two weeks before he got signed by the Jaguars, the internet would have reacted in the exact same way. So when you consider the fact that it just happened, I think we gotta be fair about this. At 38 years old, dude still got visible abs despite not being in peak shape. He's a physical freak and anomaly in many ways. So if anybody could pull this off, 
why not Brandon Jacobs? Now, given the NFL politics and his history with Harbaugh, I'm definitely not convinced that NFL teams will give this man a shot. Also, given his relative impatience on the football field, switching to a new position at 38 years old, especially when you were elite at one point, you know, that's gonna take some patience to be able to make that transition. And while he's more athletic and had a way better NFL career than Tim Tebow, I'm not sure that Brandon has the one thing that Tim Tebow had, and that is a great relationship with the guy who's in a powerful position. Tim Tebow won national championships with Urban Meyer when he was in college. Urban Meyer probably looked at Tim Tebow like a son. So when he needed like a bone to be tossed for him, you know, Urban was there to do it. Does Brandon Jacobs have that person in his corner in the league? Maybe somebody he worked with during his time at the Giants. Maybe they're still with the Giants. Maybe they're with another team, but hopefully his position coach or somebody has ascended to a level where they could say, you know what, bro? This dude, I'm vouching for this cat. You know, let's bring him in here. It's funny that Brandon started on the D-line and coaches tried to move him back there for years. He proved he could play running back at the highest level and now he wants an opportunity to show he could rush the passer as well. If he's serious and the team gives him a shot, it only adds to a plethora of storylines that's gonna make this an extremely fun football season. Brandon Jacobs rightfully has confidence in his ability. To him, y'all probably just sound like the same people he's heard his entire life. The cats that made fun of him when he had to take special education class. The people who said he was too big to play running back. Or the ones that told him he'd never make it to the NFL in the first place. I'm not saying he will or won't make it. Hell, he might not even get his foot in the door to get the opportunity. But years ago, I completely changed my thought process. I started to celebrate and respect the attempt to achieve greatness. Because most people are just too damn scared to go for anything that's said to be out of their reach. Brandon Jacobs already achieved greatness once, and now he's going for it a second time. And if you can't respect that, it's probably because you never reach beyond and grab the unreachable. Straight up.